Hi folks, Howard at Raglan Piano Company. I want to make a brief video showing our latest version of the mask that we've uh, designed here. This particular version was tested at a local uh, medical facility on a port account machine and scored equivalent to an N95, both in sealing capability and in filtering capability. So I'm gonna show you briefly what we've done, let you uh, take this and run with it, expand on it, do what you can with it. Basically what we do, we start with a frame that we've cut out on our laser machine. And uh, if I can get this to work right, in the comments below, I'll link uh, to where you can get a copy of this, at least as a PDF, if not uh, a laser ready file. But we start with just a cardboard frame just like this. It's got markings where we'll bend it. It uh, has arrows right here and right here. Later in the assembly process, we put those two arrows together to form the contour of the mask. The first thing that we do is we go and start gluing filter material in. The filter material that I'm putting on right now came from a MERV 12 home air conditioning filter. MERV 12 is good for pollen and for uh, larger objects, not as small generally as viruses are, although it may catch some. Basically what I do is I just run a bead of hot glue, low temperature, around the uh, perimeter, and then I'll take an iron and iron around the edge. I try not to get in the middle itself because we don't know what heat does to the filtration ability of the material. So I'll just kind of go around the edges here staying out of the center and make sure that this is bonded down very well to the cardboard. I guess I should do this where y'all can see it. And you can kind of see when it starts to wick through the uh, material here. After that's done, we'll take a piece, this is a true HEPA uh, filter material here that we harvested out of a uh, an air purifier filter. Basically, we'll just do the very same thing again, do the other side as well. Once all that's done, you'll have something that looks like this right here. Rather than bore you gluing on filter material, we got one ready to go to begin with. So this, this has already been ironed. These are already glued in place. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is show you how to assemble the frame itself. What I start off with doing, I want to give it a crease, a slight crease right down the middle here to make later assembly a little bit easier. So I'm going to take and put it on the edge of the table, just line it up, give it a very slight crease right there up the middle. For the nose reinforcement to help hold shape, we had a local metal company cut us some little strips of metal that when bent will help keep the shape around the nose. And we found the best way to hold that in place is good old fashioned duct tape. I know as Southern engineering as that sounds, it's been the best thing we found. It also helps hold the uh, padding on, which I'll show you here in just a second. But basically, I just tape that in place right there and I take the excess and I fold that over. That also helps us reinforce this nose area here, which gets bent. And so, the, the tape is actually serving two purposes, holding the metal in place and then giving the cardboard some reinforcement right here at the edge. All right, now once that's done, we take what is sold as, uh, it's sold as camper tape. This is a tape that you would stick down when you were mounting a uh, camper on a pickup bed. Uh, we cut it in half, we cut it to length, we put a few marks on it. I have found that this design right here seals the best. The reason for these tapers is, as this goes down the face along the cheekbone, this tapering helps make the transition from no, uh, no padding, no foam uh, to the mask itself and helps prevent leaks in the corners. So basically, we take this and we stick it down, flush at the top and centered on the mask right there. Well, let's do it sticky side down. All right, there we go. The sticky side down works so much better. Now then, we talked earlier about these arrows here. You're gonna see where that comes into play now. I'm gonna go ahead and give it just a very slight rounded bend right here. And then you might be able to see the, uh, the little hash marks that we have here. That's lines to help determine where to fold what's going to become the nose piece. So I'm gonna fold along those lines, get those out of the way. 
and then I'm going to put some glue from this hash mark forward to this arrow and all in here and pull this together and glue it in place. So I'm gonna do that right now. You wanna get all the way around the perimeter real good. You don't want any leaks anywhere because obviously leaks will defeat the purpose. All righty. You might notice the M that I have right there under my thumb right now. That is indicating that this is a medium. We actually have these available in several different sizes because apparently people have different size faces. All right, I'm gonna let that kind of tack and grab. Then we're gonna turn our attention to the front here. You can see we've got a little bit of a crease started. I'm gonna kind of accentuate that just a little bit right here in the front. And then I always dry fit before you put the glue on, make sure everything's fitting up well. But you see, this is how we're going to seal the front of it. There's, sometimes there's a little gap right there. We're gonna deal with that on a following step where we use glue to seal everything up. So right here, I'm gonna put glue on these two edges, the two tabs here, and glue that up. And hold that in place, let that dry, let that, or not dry, let it cool off and grab. All right, now with that in place like that, I'm gonna go inside here, this little triangle in the end. You can see where we've got some squeeze out, but I'm gonna go all the way around that with my glue gun and make certain we have all those little gaps filled in. So there's no possibility of this leaking. And I'm gonna even come down this seam just a little bit right here and make sure that none of that is leaking there. So what we've done now, we've got the basic shape of the mask built. Now we're gonna put the elastic on it. On our design, I've put little hash marks that show us where to put the, essentially it's just a rubber band that we've cut. Uh, and, uh, but I have found that these positions aid the best sealing. Uh, it, makes it makes it fit the face the best. Now, some of my designs had a third band here. You can do that if you want to. Two is sufficient. Three obviously gives an added layer of protection there. So I'm gonna just turn this over here, put a little drop of glue opposite where that hash mark is. I'm gonna leave about a half inch of rubber band, maybe a little more sticking out right there. We'll come back to that in a minute and I'll show you why we did that. Then I'm gonna come over to this side here, do the same thing, check my hash mark on the back side. And these are just ordinary Walmart rubber bands. They are latex, so if you have a latex allergy, you may wanna look for an alternative. All right, I'm gonna put a little mark right here. And that, put that in place. Really, the glue does a couple of things. If the laser happened to cut that mark all the way through, it helps seal it on this side so nothing can get in. It also helps me hold the rubber band in place long enough to get a staple on it because that's really what I'm going to rely on to hold it in place. So I'm gonna go back where I started because those will be good and dry now. And I'm gonna put a staple just right there that's gonna be part of what helps hold that rubber band in place. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this in, I'm just gonna tie a single knot right around it this way here, pull it tight. Okay, I'm gonna do that on all four here. Well, it looks like I caught that one a little bit. We may wanna, all right folks, it's a one take video. Here we go. I stapled my rubber band, that was unfortunate. But we're gonna go right on moving with it here. Okay, replacement rubber band, new staple, here we go. So watch out for stapling your rubber band on the underside of the mask. Bonus points if you don't do that. Okay. So now we've got the four rubber bands mounted to the mask. We have cut some clips on some laser equipment that we have here. You can see it makes it easy to put the rubber band through the clip and then there's a little slot that it catches in and it stays in place unless you pull real tight on the rubber band, thin it out. Once you let go, it fattens back up and that clip holds it in place. So this is how we've made these adjustable. Now you don't have to do that. You could just put paper clips on the end. You could, there's all kinds of different ways to secure these two rubber bands together. You can just tie them in a knot and, uh, and make it where it's just, it is not adjustable. But we chose to make these adjustable. Again, different people, different size heads. 
put this other one on right here. All right, and that, that's the completed mask. Everything's on it that needs to be on it now. And this design caught the requisite number of particles on a part account, port account. Um, to qualify it as an N95. Now there's a lot that goes into that folks. The type of filter material that you use plays a huge part on that. Quality of assembly obviously does the same thing as well and making sure it fits your face properly up at the nose and all around the perimeter is also very important. So I'm going to put this on. Let me take my glasses off to do that. I'm probably doing this the wrong way. All right, and then in the back, where you can see plenty of gray hair, we can grab these bands and slide to tighten them up. I think I did something wrong. There it is right there. Slide that. Slide this one here. I'm grabbing the wrong thing, aren't I? And tighten those up like that. Let's see here. There's one right there and one there. So that's how to tighten the straps up. Make sure that the nose piece is good and tight. You don't want to get any leakage up here. This is the tricky area right here. This all seals fairly well. Right here, this is really critical to get this right. The foam, while I'm thinking about it, the foam will compress and then it'll fluff back out again. So you may have to give it just a, a minute, not even a minute, just a few seconds once you're fitting your mask and let that open back up out again because it does eventually open back up. So I'm Howard with Raglan Piano Company. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take this information and run with it, improvise on it, do anything that you can with it. It's what I consider open source. It's for anybody that this will help. Thank you very much.